Whenever you're ready. Go ahead. Uh, my name is Stacy Stevens. I'm in the AES cohort, and ours was face-to-face. Face. Face -face. Melinda Kay in the AES cohort, face-to-face. -face. Um, what? Why did you decide to take Hotel? Uh, because I'm a librarian, and I feel like a 21st century librarian needs to be more tech-savvy, and I wanted to increase my technology skills. Um, I did it because I'm curriculum and... I think that uh, having that knowledge and that background will help me in my work with technology integrators and the curriculum work um, that I do. And I felt I felt like it was good for me professionally, not just not just in my day to day, but being able to demonstratively prove to people later on that like I really care about tech and I've invested my time and my effort um, to learn because I think that yeah, it's important for looking for jobs and just even that practical. Gives you more authority. Basically. Yeah, it does. And, and people trusting what you say about integrating technology when you know what you're doing. Yourself. Have the conversation. Yeah. It's not like you didn't sit in that class. Right. And and learn about all of those things. How important was the 15 graduate credits to you? For me, not important because um, I don't. The number of units I have to, don't doesn't matter. <laughs> so um, that was not important to me. For me, I got tons out of every single class. I have to say that I, I think I really helped me improve my tech understanding and got, started me down a great path to improving the way I present and use information in my in the library. Um, the, the course, the 15 graduate credit course credits were important in the sense that it's kind of nice to have an MLS as well as a tech endorsement. It also happened to mean that it would, I'd have an MA for study, but I'm not going to do any more to get to the second <laughs> MA. I'm kind of dumb. But it was cool to have that little piece of, this piece of paper. is nice. So I'm, there is okay. something to, there yeah. is something to that. There is some value of that. Um, what did you like about the current design structure? Um, I think we had it nice, a nice mix of individual work as well as group work. It was really nice being face to face and hearing from my colleagues at school. I mean, I like the face to face uh, a lot. Um, so I'm not sure whether I would have got as much of, out of it if it had been online. Also, it's nice to have tech integrators that I could ask questions to on campus if I needed them. Yeah. Um, and I'm very concrete sequential, so I need that further clarification quite often. Um, I liked the face to face, but. Um, and you and I have actually talked about this, is I think that when I think about some of the objectives that COTEL has, you know, as, as a program and some of the things that you want to see people become at the end, I actually think that the extensive nature of our face-to-face -face contact made it easy for us not to connect with other people outside of our cohort. I think we're probably more isolated and insular, would be my guess, than almost any other cohort out there. Now, I don't want to do the entire thing online. Either I liked having that connection, but I think that in the structure of the course, if we really want people to be connected and developing a PLN and starting to look outside of their own environment for resources, I'm not sure to what extent that was accomplished. No, I agree, but maybe if it was modified so that that would be more emphasis on that piece, and it started more earlier earlier on within the Kota course classes. It started in the first course on like the it? first day. But you mean with our blog? No, like Twitter and I you guess, know, following I know, blogs. I know. That was like the first that was the first thing they did. Okay, so maybe we <laughs> didn't have to have that as an actual assignment. Like the blogs we had to do. So maybe that you know, maybe we would have encouraged those of us who are very reticent of that of going out there yeah. and a little shyer. It might have made us push ourselves a little earlier off. Well and I think if we had been partnered up with some other cohort or some other people online to kind of try and bring those things together that might have made you reach out and get a little bit more um, connected. I, I don't think there's any prerequisite knowledge in tech. I think you want, I think you should be a strong teacher. Um, I would think that that could be a really difficult course for people who just stand and deliver. Oh, I mean, you're really, <laughs> I guess you're just not that comfortable. I mean, there were certain things with technology that I had never done, so I had to learn them and it pushed me to do that. Um, but I think I felt pretty comfortable in my own pedagogy as a librarian and the, and the research models I used and that was, I just, it just enhanced what I was able to do. But yeah, some of the tech stuff I was a little, I, I learned, I needed to yeah. learn. Uh, available and instructor, very available. Face-to-face <laughs> -face program. <laughs> <laughs> right up the stairs. Uh, that was very easy. I, I guess were the course objectives measurable? 
Um, I think, yeah. The question is, did we measure them? Yeah. So I I, think that they are measurable, but were they measured? That I can't answer. I don't know. Well, I mean, I think with some of the courses, like when we had to do, um, you know, we had to design units and, you know, incorporate some of the things we had learned. I mean, you know, I guess those were measurable, but did we do that? Uh, My favorite course. And the infographic, I mean, all of that was really measurable because it was a product. You could see, did you figure out how to do an infographic or not? I kind of wish that we had had more opportunities like the one in the second one where we were actually doing things like you had us make movies you had us make infographics and i found those assignments far more meaningful to me than blogging Mm -hmm. (laughs) so but i want to do and and sometimes i want to say but i want to be able to do and or say and that was my favorite class was and that's where i think the assessments were actually the most appropriate is where we were learning about presentation zen and then applying presentation zen either in our work or in a presentation that we made to the class or I had to make you know an infographic for something that was useful to my work that I could use with teachers or students or whatever and I, I just felt like that that was I thought it was great to make us apply things and I would I would like to apply things more yeah to, to kind of to you know Add to what you just said, I like the fact that we had to do infographics. I actually kind of feel it would be nice to have done more than one and more than one presentation mm-hmm. then because if you do it once, you kind of then you forget it and you lose it unless you have the opportunity to do it again in a few classes. So perhaps, you know, doing a few more so you really felt comfortable with it. I think that um, those things really impacted people's instruction more than anything. The blogging also for me, I mean, I put a lot of thought into my blogs and they seem to take me forever to do and the one thing good thing about it was it did really make me think Mm -hmm. and also try to put my thoughts down in a coherent way Uh, so but yeah I think I just wish I had another way to demonstrate understanding because we're not all writers and we're not all bloggers I'm I'm starting I'm wondering like is there like an audio app (laughs) like for blogs that I can just like post what I think you know verbally that would It was so time intensive, and I blog in other parts of my job that at times it felt very inauthentic to me when I think I choose to authentically blog outside of Coattail, but I think I'm an outlier in that, and I know that I'm an outlier in that. But um, I wanted more of the stuff that I was doing outside class to be able to count in class, I guess, because I felt like so much of it I was already doing, and then I had to do it again. Do you think that's because of your role at the school? Like you're I think part of that's because I choose to do some of these things on my own. That I had done some of these things before I got into Coattail. And so I actually had to change some of the things that I would like to do in order to meet the Coattail expectations. And, I, and, I, and I'm not saying that it needs to be this way, but I think for me, and like I, I think I am an outlier in it, it's that I almost wanted an opportunity to use some of the other stuff that I was doing to demonstrate my understanding because I have it, Mm -hmm. but I was required to demonstrate it in a different way that wasn't very meaningful to me at times. When I think I can offer other things up to demonstrate that I understand and I'm doing it, that would be (coughs) more in line with what I'm doing. Are we up to the grading? Yeah. Were the assessments appropriate? Yes. We think we've spoken to that. Was the course grading policy clearly stated? Yes. And for me, actually, it was actually in the beginning when it was my own fault. I didn't really care read through clearly what was expected on the blog which had an input of image and a link and I did the first one without clearly reading the rubric and I didn't put an image in but then I was given the opportunity to go back and add that and have my grade reflect, re-reflect what the changes I had made. So I thought that was good. And I think we had lots of opportunities to measure our learning and where we were at and what we were getting. I mean I think I can't imagine that most people didn't get a lot out of the class. No and what I feel like I want to do now I'm at my last one I want to go back over my notes and some of the main key themes and ideas and kind of have them up on the wall to remind me, oh, hold on, Melinda, you can, remember you can do this. You should enhance what you're teaching by doing this or adding this. Like, I wish there was like some kind of info, big infographic, which maybe I need to make, that just has the main <laughs> ideas of all the stuff we do because we covered so much that I could just refer to and go, well, hold on a second. That's a great thing of your me. assessment. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> can I do that instead of a blog? <laughs> 
I'm doing it now. Oh, I'll post it on my blog. Can we do that instead of the presentation? <laughs> <laughs> so, I love that idea. Yeah, because we need that. Because you forget like everything. You've you got to concretize it. You've got to have concretize it. Concretize it. That's a word. Oh. <laughs> okay. Make it concrete, like solidify it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like to give, take, it's like through that reflection process, but to kind of like really put out there and remember, like, what did I really take away from this? Right. As like a reminder, we're going to do infographics. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And that's it. <laughs> Thank you so much.